If you're considering Redotrutide, the new weight loss drug everyone's talking about, I lost 20 pounds in five weeks without losing any muscle. And I want to take some time to tell you exactly what this stuff is, my experience with it, and how it works. But before we go any further, just a quick note. This is not medical advice, and I suggest that before you put anything into your body, you consult with a licensed physician. I'm not here to tell you what to put in your body. That's between you and your doctor. But people are getting their hands on this stuff anyway, so you deserve real information that you can rely on. Now, for context, retrotide, it's not FDA approved yet. But the phase two studies show people losing 24% of their body weight on average. That's better than anything else available right now. Now, here's what it actually is and exactly how it works. Retitrutide is a weekly shot that works on three different hormone systems in your body. First, it targets your GLP-1 hormone receptors. GLP-1 is the hormone released in your gut after you eat. It tells your pancreas to release insulin when blood sugar rises. It slows how quickly your stomach empties. It reduces sugar output from your liver and signals your brain that you're full. When you target GLP-1 receptors with a drug, the body responds as though extra GLP-1 is present. So it helps keep your blood glucose steady, slows how fast your stomach empties so you feel full longer, reduces your appetite, and lowers how much sugar your liver releases into your blood. Second, it targets GIP hormone receptors. GIP is another hormone released in your gut after you eat. It tells your pancreas to release insulin along with GLP-1, helps fat tissue store energy, and guides your body to use nutrients more efficiently. When you target GIP receptors with a drug, the body responds as if there's extra GIP. So it improves insulin release after meals by making the pancreas more responsive when blood sugar rises. It keeps blood sugar more stable by reducing sharp spikes and crashes and supports nutrient partitioning by guiding fat and muscle cells to take up and use nutrients instead of leaving extra sugar or fat in the blood. And lastly, this is the part that makes retitrutide unique. It activates your glucagon receptors. Glucagon is a hormone made in your pancreas that usually works opposite to insulin. It tells your liver to release stored sugar and break down fat to use as energy. When you target glucagon receptors with a drug, the body responds as if extra glucagon is present. So it signals the liver to burn more fat, increases the number of calories your body uses even while it's at rest, and works together with GLP-1 and GIP activity to drive stronger weight loss than hitting one pathway alone. This triple action is exactly what makes retitrutide more powerful than semaglutide or terzepatide. Semaglutide only works on GLP-1 receptors, which mainly just reduces appetite and slows the stomach. Terzepatide adds the GIP receptor, which improves insulin response and nutrient partitioning, giving it an edge over the semaglutide. Retitrutide goes a step further by also activating the glucagon receptors, which increases your fat breakdown and your caloric burn. So instead of just eating less and keeping blood sugar stable, your body's also actively burning more energy at rest. And that combination of eating less, steady blood sugar, better nutrient use, and higher calorie burn explains why people in studies lost more on retitrutide than any of the other drugs. Studies actually showed 24% average weight loss on retitrutide. For context, semaglutide got about 15% and terzepatide gets around 20%. And that extra few percent might not sound like much, but if you weigh 200 pounds, that's 10 to 15 more pounds lost in the same amount of time. Now, here are my results after five weeks. I'm down about 20 pounds and I haven't really lost any muscle mass. Now, one of the big concerns that I had was when I take a drug like this, is the calorie deficit I'm in going to affect energy and performance? And I'll be real with you, I haven't really noticed a significant reduction in my overall energy while I've been using it, and I've been on nearly a thousand calorie deficit for the last five weeks. Now, for me, the appetite suppression has probably been the most challenging. I really feel indifferent about food and I find it difficult to hit my daily protein target. 
there are days where I'd get to dinner and realize that I'd pretty much forgotten to eat all day. So I actually had to set alarms to remind myself to eat because severely under eating my protein has kind of had a negative impact on my recovery. Now, outside of the major fat loss and the significant reduction in appetite, I've also noticed a few other side effects, both good and bad. First, I have naturally high blood pressure, and I've noticed since starting Red Eye, it's now staying consistently within the normal range, and the quality of my sleep has also significantly improved. However, there are a couple of weird side effects that most guys don't talk about. Number one, I've had this slight skin sensitivity, especially at night. It's not painful, it's just slightly annoying. Like I can feel my clothes rubbing on my skin and it bothers me, but it's not really that bad unless I consciously think about it. And number two, it's kind of hard to explain, but I kind of feel cold all the time. Not like shivering type cold, just like where I feel like I need to wear a sweater during the day. And honestly, I sit here at my desk while I'm working and I have a blanket wrapped around my legs to stay warm. Most of the time, these side effects aren't noticeable until I actually notice them. Then they can get kind of annoying. Outside of that, the only struggle I had at first was a slight bit of constipation during the first week, but that kind of went away on its own. I really haven't experienced any major side effects since I've increased my dose, which now I'm taking about six milligrams per week without any noticeable issues with my stomach or my digestive tract. Other than that, be aware that the studies on RETA also list nausea, vomiting, diarrhea as common side effects that people experienced. So if this is something you decide you want to take, make sure you're aware of that. One thing to note is that you have to be way more intentional about nutrition. Like I said earlier, I had a hard time hitting my protein targets at first because your body is basically no longer sending normal hunger signals. And if you're not careful, you'll accidentally starve yourself, kind of like I did. So you have to make sure you're always getting enough protein. That way you can ensure your weight loss is actually fat loss. Now, let's spend some time talking about what the studies actually showed. The phase two trial of Redditrutide followed 338 adults with obesity for 48 weeks on the drug. And at the highest dose, on average, people lost 24.2% of their body weight. So what that means is a person who was 200 pounds lost about 50 pounds over 48 weeks. 91% of the people lost at least 5% of their body weight. 75% of those people lost 15% or more. And 26% of those people lost 30% or more of their body weight. Even more interestingly, researchers looked at liver fat. And that's actually where the results of the impact of this drug stood out the most. People on Redditrutide saw about an 80% drop in the amount of fat stored in the liver. For many users, their liver fat went all the way down back to normal levels. And you have to remember that the people they studied Redditrutide on were already obese. So they had extremely high liver fat levels. And that matters because high liver fat is probably the biggest driver of fatty liver disease insulin resistance, and long-term metabolic problems. Now, larger phase three studies are already underway with thousands of participants to confirm these results before the final FDA review. And the initial results from phase three are already confirming the results that they saw in phase two. So the approval of retitrutide so far is looking pretty good. Now, as far as safety is concerned, the main side effects showed up in the stomach only when people started the drug or increased their dose. Again, the things I mentioned earlier, like nausea and diarrhea. There was one reported case of somebody who had pancreatitis, but it kind of resolved on its own. They had no reports of problems with a thyroid or thyroid cancer, and they didn't have any problems with anybody who had any type of episode of severe low blood sugar. And the reason this is important is because you have to remember these GLP-1 medications were initially created to help people with type 2 diabetes. As far as the cost side is concerned, right now the only legal way that you can get retitrutide is through like a research chemical company, not for human consumption. Right now, some people are finding that retitrutide for as low as like 150 a month through some of these companies. Just be aware of what you're getting and make sure that if you do go that route for research, this is not for human consumption. These are for research purposes only. Use at your own risk. 
But once Reddit True Type actually gets that FDA approval and enters the market through doctors and clinics, you can expect that price to climb upwards of $1,500 a month or more. Which is actually interesting because Eli Lilly, the creator of Redditrutide, actually just sued the FDA to get Redditrutide labeled as a biologic instead of as a drug. And the reason for this is because now it gives them exclusivity to sell in U.S. markets for up to 12 years versus just the five that the original label would have given them. Obviously, this is a huge cash grab, and their intention is to monopolize the market on Reddit True Tide so that they can send the prices through the ceilings and take advantage of the American consumer. Now, that's just my take. <laughs> but for comparison, people are already paying as much as two, three hundred dollars a week for drugs like terzepatide through some of the providers that you can find out there. And so you can already see that once these drugs are approved by the FDA and you get them through that official source you're paying upwards of 10 times more than what you would pay for if you were to get it through an unofficial source. Now, the phase three trials aren't expected to finish until later this year. And that formal submission to the FDA is planned for the end of 2025. So from there, the review can take another, we'll say six to 12 months if everything goes smoothly, which means that Reddit True Tide likely won't be available legally in US markets until probably 26 or 27 at the earliest. Eli Lilly is already building a $27 billion manufacturing facility for these drugs, which is basically telling us that they're expecting a pretty massive demand for the drug. Now, to close things out on this, as a user and a coach for guys who want to lose weight and get in shape in a healthy and sustainable way, here's my honest take. This stuff works. The results match. You can start on a very low dose, maybe something like two milligrams a week, and then titrate up as your body responds and tolerates the drug, and go as high as like 12 milligrams and do really well. The effects are consistent, they're reliable, the side effects are pretty minimal for most people, and I personally plan to continue using Redditrutide to push towards single-digit body fat and see how far I can take it. But you have to understand that Redditrutide is a tool, not a miracle drug. If you're trying to lose weight and get healthy, the real focus should be on building habits that scale with you over time. Training and nutrition are the skills that let you keep muscle, stay healthy, and make your results last. And if you rely on the drug alone, you're going to face some big problems. First, when you stop taking it, it's going to be much harder to sustain those results. You're probably just going to go right back to your bad habits that got you fat in the first place. Second, while you're on it, you risk losing muscle unless you actively protect it with smart training and enough protein. You're not going to have an appetite. And if you're not actively going out of your way to hit your protein targets and lift weights, your muscle is going to go just as fast as the fat will, which is going to have a pretty significant detriment to your overall health and metabolism for the long term. So the way that I see it, Redditrutide can speed up the process of that fat loss, but the foundation absolutely has to be lifestyle. Lifting, movement, and consistent nutrition, that's what will limit long-term downsides and give you the results that you can actually keep. Now, if you want help building those habits while also staying up to date on peptide research, safety protocols, and where people are finding safe sources, there's actually a link to join my free school community in the description of this video below. Inside, I share clear breakdowns of studies, practical nutrition, and training strategies with resources for making all this sustainable and easy to follow. If you want a free invite, all you have to do is just tap the link in the description, sign up for a free account on school, and we'll get you access so that you can get these resources for yourself. Last thing, do me a favor and drop your questions in the comments and subscribe to my channel for more real world insights on supplements, peptides, and proven methods to get lean and strong the right way. I hope this was valuable for you and I hope to see you next week on another Supplement Spotlight.